completion of manned Gemini missions and the beginning of manned Apollo missions are in sight. The programs are directed by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Office of Manned Space Flight in Washington, D.C., and three field centers. The Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston, Texas, responsible for developing spacecraft, training flight crews, and controlling missions. The Marshall Space Flight Center, Huntsville, Alabama, responsible for developing launch vehicles for space operations. And the John F. Kennedy Space Center, Cape Kennedy, Florida, responsible for assembling, checking out, and launching space vehicles. The programs carried out by an experienced nationwide government industry team include Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. Mercury, the United States' first manned spaceflight program, was completed in 1963, having established a technological base for Gemini and Apollo. In Gemini, the objectives are to verify concepts and procedures for space operations and to prove man's physiological capability for 14-day flights. The two-man spacecraft is built by McDonnell Aircraft and the launch vehicle by the Martin Company, Baltimore, Maryland. By 1966, major objectives have been achieved. Valuable scientific data, such as photographs of Earth terrain, weather systems, and astronomical phenomena have been attained. Crew training has been proven sound. Flight personnel are learning to work outside a spacecraft. Rendezvous has been achieved, first between two manned Gemini spacecraft, an accomplishment made possible by launching the two vehicles only 11 days apart from the same launch pad. A 14-day mission, as well as four- and eight-day missions, have been flown, and flight crews have remained fully alert and capable. In addition to rendezvous, two vehicles have been joined in space. One a manned Gemini spacecraft, the other an Agena target vehicle. Meanwhile, the operational capability on the ground has been expanded. In addition, re-entry control has been improved. Flight crews have guided several spacecraft to within a few miles of planned impact points. Further, Department of Defense recovery forces have developed a high degree of proficiency. The final Gemini missions are devoted to expanding still more the capabilities for manned operations and scientific experimentation in space. Not only have the accomplishments of Gemini qualified concepts and procedures vital to Apollo, they have also increased confidence in the nation's ability to succeed in space. Apollo comprises three major phases, Saturn I, Apollo Saturn 1B, and Apollo Saturn V. In the Saturn I phase, which was completed in mid-1965, the primary objectives were to qualify large launch vehicle concepts, manufacturing techniques, and ground support facilities, and to gather environmental data for spacecraft and launch vehicle design. All Saturn I objectives were met with unparalleled success. In all ten of its flights, the vehicle performed according to design, attaining operational status in six instead of the ten missions as originally planned. Apollo Saturn 1B, now in the unmanned phase of flight operations, is the vehicle for the Apollo program's first manned missions. These will be flown in Earth orbit. Objectives are to verify flight hardware for the lunar mission vehicle and to gain operational experience with Apollo. The Saturn 1B has two stages and an instrument unit. The eight-engine first stage, built by Chrysler, is powered by liquid oxygen kerosene. It is very similar to the Saturn 1 first stage, but has a lighter weight structure and almost 7% greater thrust, 1,600,000 pounds. 
The single-engine second stage, built by Douglas Aircraft, is powered by a liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen and provides a thrust of 200,000 pounds. Once proven on Saturn 1B, it will serve as the third stage of Saturn V. The instrument unit, built by IBM, is similar to the one for Saturn 1 and will also be used for Saturn V. To assure mission readiness, the Saturn 1B has undergone extensive ground development and qualification testing, a practice well established throughout manned spaceflight programs. The three-man Apollo spacecraft consists of three major sections or modules. The command module, which is built by North American Aviation, carries the flight crew and serves as cockpit and living quarters. The service module, also built by North American Aviation, contains systems for propulsion, attitude control, and other flight operations, and it has space for considerable scientific equipment. The lunar module, which is built by Grumman Aircraft, will transport two members of a flight crew to the surface of the moon. It can also serve as a laboratory in space for other extended missions. The progress of the spacecraft is also characterized by extensive component and subsystem development and qualification testing. For example, the structural integrity of the command module heat shield has been proven in a series of water drop tests. The launch escape system has become flight qualified in a series of pad and launch abort missions. The service module propulsion system has passed a major phase of flight qualification tests. The liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen fuel cell for electric power and guidance and navigation equipment are approaching flight qualification. Landing gear designs for the lunar module, which is well along in development, have been proven sound for touchdowns on a variety of surfaces. The lunar module propulsion systems are well along in development. Ground development and qualification work will continue until all equipment is fully qualified for the lunar mission. In the meantime, systems for all three modules will be verified during Apollo Saturn 1B missions. Because of the importance of Apollo Saturn 1B, its first launching, conducted in February at the Kennedy Space Center's Complex 34, was the major manned spaceflight milestone for 1966. suborbital flight included verifying the performance of the launch vehicle and spacecraft combined and the heat protective characteristics of the spacecraft heat shielding. During the mission, the launch vehicle's first stage, second stage shown here as photographed by an onboard camera, and instrument unit performed as designed. It placed the spacecraft into the program trajectory, which had an apogee or high point of more than 300 miles. For the spacecraft, which was recovered in the South Atlantic by the USS Boxer, the systems performed according to design specifications, with only minor problems in the propulsion system and heat shielding. The first Apollo Saturn 1B flight was a vital step toward the next major milestone, the first manned Apollo Saturn 1B mission, for which the flight crew is already in training. For other upcoming Apollo Saturn 1B missions, space vehicle hardware, including the first flight lunar module, is well along in assembly. The Apollo Saturn 1B flights will lead to Apollo Saturn 5 space operations. Apollo Saturn 5 is the vehicle for the manned lunar mission and for extended manned space operations. Here being used for facilities checkout at the Kennedy Space Center's Complex 39, is the first complete Saturn V ever assembled. The Saturn V has three stages and an instrument unit. 
In facilities across the nation, parts such as first stage umbilical plugs, engine activation system components, and second stage separation system components are being tested. Structural testing for all stages is essentially complete. Dynamics testing has been completed for the vehicle's third stage and instrument unit and the Apollo spacecraft. Dynamics testing for the entire vehicle is scheduled for completion in time for the first unmanned flight in 1967. With all engines qualified for manned missions, all three stages are approaching the completion of development static firings. Qualification and development testing for both the Saturn V launch vehicle and the Apollo spacecraft will continue through 1967. Meanwhile, manufacturing work is moving ahead for Apollo Saturn V flight vehicles. And manufacturing for the first of these vehicles, scheduled for flight in 1967, is almost finished. The progress in manned spaceflight up to 1966 can be measured by the accomplishments in manned missions and hardware development. But it would not have been possible without similar accomplishments in facility construction and utilization. For instance, on rangeland for Texas cattle, the manned spacecraft center has been erected. Government facilities at Redstone Arsenal in Alabama have been expanded into the present Marshall Space Flight Center. On a Delta swamp, the Mississippi test facility has been erected for use in static firings of Saturn V first and second stages, and with the first firing of a second stage in the spring of 1966, the facility became operational. The World War II government facility, the Michoud Ordnance Plant near New Orleans, was adapted for use in building Saturn first stages. And on the marshland in Florida, the John F. Kennedy Space Center and Launch Complex 39, the nation's first manned space port, has been built. Contractors, too, have erected facilities, both with their own funds and with government money. Rapidly now, this nation is gaining strength and momentum in manned space flight. In 1966, the government industry team has been assembled. Mercury is complete. Major objectives in Germany have been accomplished. Saturn I is complete. Manned flights in Apollo Saturn 1B are in sight. Unmanned flights in Apollo Saturn V are approaching. Facilities have been built. And already, university, government, and industry scientists are determining how best to capitalize on this strength for better utilizing the resources of the Earth, for exploring the makeup of the moon for determining the nature of the stars and the universe.